Hi everyone, I am back with another video. It has been, I think the last time I posted was in maybe early February. And um, we are now in April and I needed to take some, I needed to take time off social media. So I haven't been on social media at all. And um, yeah, you'll understand why as we get into this video. Okay, so I have been gone for quite a while and uh, it has been a journey. Let me just call it that. It has been... A lot has been happening. Okay, and um, if you've watched my videos before, if you've watched my... If you watched the last... Not the last video that I put out, although the video that I put out last, I only left it up for, I think, maybe like... A day or two maybe three days at most and uh, the devil works <laughs> let me just say the devil works but uh, what happened was that um, the video that I released about finding God essentially which is what it was it wasn't about just pure celibacy it wasn't about relationship so to speak like the bigger picture was finding God you know and I found God and the beginning is never easy obviously people always have a lot to say and people having to say people having things to say has never bothered me that's why i've always been able to just speak my mind and it's not always gone how i've intended for it to go but it's never bothered me at all anyway so uh when i put that video out the infamous video if i can call it that when i put that video out I specifically said that I didn't want to put that video out but God told me to put that video out then you know like once you find God right and you allow him to use you he's not going to use you in the way that you expect you know he's not going to just like shower you with blessings so people can see his mercy and his grace he's going to use you however he wants to use you so God told me to put out that video and obviously I was hesitant but I was positive 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 that i was actually hearing god and it was my story that he wanted me to use out and you know i had like a lot of things like people don't need to know all your business and you can just confess things to god there's like, confessing that he already knows it's already confessed to google everything was already confessed to god you know it wasn't like i was telling god through the video but uh anyway he had me put that story out and after I think less than a week obviously you know being hit left and right by family and friends just certain situations uh, let me just say that the devil found a way in without you know the devil found a way in and I ended up taking the video down and I went into, let's say, not really a small depression. Actually, yes, let's just call it a small depression because I feel like that's what it was. And I regretted my decision greatly because, uh, you know, I felt like I wanted what I had back. You know, I wanted everything that I had given up. And I wasn't getting any peace because I kept thinking like, okay, what am I going to do now? I have nothing. You know and family is great but once you're used to life a certain way and suddenly you don't have it anymore things get hard and i'm not saying like they get hard physically because i had a house to sleep in i have clothes to wear i have food to eat you know there's work if they if i want to work there's work that's there for me to do so it wasn't about a physical thing it was a mental thing of the future you know like i'm not gonna have this i'm not gonna be able to do one two three and you know just the stuff that i was used to and the devil used that and the struggle was in my mind you know i would just keep hearing like it would just be pressure and anxiety and you know i got depressed actually and I stopped praying I stopped um, I didn't want anything to do with God at that point because I, because I was like God if I really was hearing you to put this video out why is it that everything is just in shambles 
you know i was happy the first few days but like why am i now miserable why am i feeling so tortured and so like like i was so wrong you know like what i did was so wrong if it really was you speaking to me and i obeyed why am i not getting anything positive out of it and that was actually very wrong because i know i got really like i got a lot of messages before i took down my instagram i got many messages about people telling me about their lives and they, what they've been struggling with and how you know i've encouraged them to seek god and all of that and change their patterns and all of that so that was very wrong with me. but you know like when you're stressed and depressed like you never see the positives that you have you're always looking at what you've lost you know or what you have that you what you want that you don't have so uh for about two weeks straight i didn't pray i was literally just in a state of depression and i started reverting back to my old patterns you know phones these days and you know just to sort of make myself feel better i guess i was you know like just looking at different profiles and i'm just going to be open and honest like i have always been okay so like dating sites and stuff like that and there's men that will offer you anything you want anything you need anything that you think is you know goals or whatever they will always be someone to give it to you and i'm not even going to lie i got the opportunities but god knew what i was going through so i couldn't go through with anything that had been offered you know even while we chat and everything i would still know at the back of my head that i'm just whiling away time finally towards the end of the second week i think it was um i read a book or none of on the book app that i normally use but it was about god obviously and i had no intentions of reading anything to do with god at that point you know even when i went to church the past sunday I couldn't even like clap or worship like my mind was just out of it my heart was just out of it like I couldn't focus like I had no interest like I didn't want to do anything or hear anything about God at that point I just didn't want to so anyway so I read this book and it was someone's testimony and you know God uses different ways to get your attention and this wasn't a testimony this was someone's testimony i think about uh i think it was a near-death experience i honestly can't rem quite remember which because i read a lot of stuff i can't quite remember what exactly it was i re was reading but i know that after reading that book i suddenly just became more open i was like okay um god i'm ready to listen you know and i said I'm giving it all up to you. I'm I'm leaving it all for you again and I'm sorry I've strayed and you know like I was very honest with God and I told him like I'm struggling with this because it's not easy and I want all these things and I want you know like the love that I had and then I also want to please you at the same time but it's seeming like it's not possible and i knew that i couldn't do it alone and i remember like i'd ask guys for you know like which church can i go to oh my why am i tearing up oh sorry Anyway, so um, I was very open and honest, you know, I said this is hard, like this is very, very, very hard for me to do and I can do it by myself. I'd been looking for churches and, you know, I said, I prayed, I asked God, you know, like lead me to a church, lead me to people that have the same mindset, lead me to people that are living for you, you know, and literally the next day, someone that had contacted me when I removed the video you know just about encouragement and for some reason I never give people my number okay but for some reason I gave two people my number uh, no I gave three people my number one of these people suddenly reached out to me the next day you know after I finally opened myself up to God and you know 
he said um hey how are you um there's someone that is asking for your number um can i give it to them and i said actually i didn't block this person like i'd blocked everyone on whatsapp i didn't like it was crazy so he sent me a message like he texted me and uh i said sure yeah give her give her my number that's okay and after i think after a while like she messaged me and you know she said uh for some funny reason god has told her to reach out to me and she didn't have my number of course so she went to her pastor and was you know just chatting with her pastor and whatever and she told her pastor about me that oh there's this girl called lisa and i don't know god has put it in my heart or you know just something with those stone within those lines of god had put it in her heart to look for me and she asked my, the pastor about it and the pastor and <sighs> okay this guy right that texted me had told his pastor about me and he'd also told me about his pastor so when he told his pastor about me and you know if he could meet up with me and stuff like that. the pastor had said when the time is right and you know if god wills it it will happen you know you don't push for these things so this girl that wanted my number now that he was telling me wants my number had gone and told her pastor which coincidentally happened to be the exact same pastor that he'd told about me so this pastor told her that oh is that the same lisa that uh this guy told me about and it was and he was like yeah he told the girl yeah get get her number from so and so let's call him jimmy let's get get your get her number from jimmy so she messages jimmy and jimmy messages me and asks if you know he can give her my number and i say okay, cool so now she reached out and her message really touched me and i feel like it was like she sent me an email because the messages weren't even flowing so she had sent me an email and at that moment i felt god's love so so much because when i thought that i was alone when i thought that i've destroyed my life i wasn't i knew that god had told me to do that okay but then now people put doubt in my head and now i was dealing with that because then again i was a new christian so i can't really say that i was you know like rooted there's still life that is going on you know so at this moment like i felt the love of god in my life so strongly because i was like i've been refusing to talk to god and i've been ignoring god for these two weeks but he's still been thinking about me even when i'm not thinking about him like do you understand what i'm saying and i broke down and i repented and you know like he just filled me with love like i don't even know how to explain this to you guys but it's not anything that a man can do for you or a woman can do for you or alcohol can do for you it's just something that it's 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 a feeling that you know it's from god so we spoke a bit and me and what i call him jimmy continued our communication and the funny thing is god didn't lead me to any church i still i haven't i still haven't found a church that i can say yes god has led me to this church but i've been having fellowship almost every single day with this person and i can't even begin to tell you guys how often we see god working not just in my life but in his life and also through me you know and the crazy thing is god knows exactly what we need and your obedience to him opens a door for his glory to be manifested in your life and i know that if god had led me to a church remember church is a once a week thing maybe twice a week thing but you need to go somewhere you know you need you around people and everyone is doing their own things and it's sort of like a group thing it's not a one-on-one -on -one discussion and i think when you're actually becoming like a new christian you need that one-on-one -on -one. it can't be once a week it can't be twice a week it needs to be every moment 
So God brought this person in my life because he knew a church wouldn't do it for me. Just a pastor wouldn't do it for me because a pastor has so many people he's ministering to. He has so many responsibilities, so many, you know, things that are going on that he needs to do. It can't just be about me. He brought me a person that has the time. He brought me a person that has the patience. He brought me someone that knows his word, like knows his word and doesn't just know it by virtue of reading the Bible, but reading the Bible and living it every single day, living it, living it, listening to God, obeying God, trusting God, having absolute faith in God. And guys, when I tell you that living in God's will and obeying what God tells you to do, even if it's the littlest, most insignificant thing, it bears fruit. Like, God reveals himself to you and he doesn't reveal himself to you, but you know, like making you happy all the time. Or, you know, you always feel like singing and praising and glorifying God. No, no, no. He manifests to you, he manifests it in a way that even if it's something that you want, that you think is, you know, worldly or whatever, he will give it to you because at the end of the day, you're God's child and he wants you to have everything. You know, the thing is, the, the, the way, the, the what's important is just how you get it. And if you get it from God, no one can ever take it away from you. And I, I needed to know that because my mind was so trapped in um i'm not gonna be able to travel i'm not gonna be able to afford one two three things like all these insignificant things and now here i am okay i'm facing god and i'm like i don't want these things i don't want these things and now here's god now telling me there's nothing wrong with you wanting these things i can give you these things they're all mine to give but your heart has to be right you know so that also now took me away from that space of Christians are not supposed to live a certain lifestyle or Christians are not supposed to do certain things and It's true Christians are not supposed to live a certain lifestyle, but it's nowhere does it say that like Christians are not supposed to have good things or enjoy life, you know And that was another lie that the devil was trying to put into me, but uh I really wanted to tell you guys now that I'm back to filming and recording because I know that this was my purpose Once I deleted everything I said I'm done with social media. I'm done with putting my life out there like I'm done with everything but then the funny thing is like when I finally accepted God back literally I told you guys when after being contacted by this Jimmy we're still calling him Jimmy after being contacted by Jimmy and you know like I've accepted to listen to God and I've accepted to be back in obedience remember key thing is being back in obedience okay I got a call that they wanted my story for um true love and that was just instant I don't know whether to call it verification that yeah God actually does want this story out it's no longer my story it's now like I've given it to him right it's his to use how he wants to use it I don't know how he wants to use my story but he's most definitely wanted it out and he was showing me this okay fine you took down the video but guess what it's okay this story is going to get out in spite of that so here is a magazine and you know I was thinking okay it's going to be like just a you know like a story inside the magazine like just a feature story but God says uh -uh, no it's going to be a cover story and I remember the day when we went for the shoot and one of the people there like one of the true love personnel staff whatever asked me like were you surprised that it's the cover story and I said uh, you know not to be proud or seem somehow but no i wasn't surprised because the thing is god doesn't do things in a little way god does things in ways that you don't expect at all and god controls everything actually also before i forget when they called me and told me that they want to feature my story she said uh they're thinking of publishing it maybe in like three months and i was like oh, okay cool at least i have time to get myself together and you know like remember this is the second day after i've second or third day like let's just say same week 
that I've finally come back to God, right? And I'm like, okay, if, uh, at least I have time. Three months, that's okay, that's perfect. I have time to, you know, sort out my thoughts and, you know, just get stronger and just all of that stuff. And then the next day she says, no, it's actually going to be April. Literally, next month, like the following month. And I was like, oh, okay. But the thing is, when God wants something done, he doesn't work with our time frame. He works with his own time. He wanted that story out ASAP, as soon as possible. I had put it out and then I had deleted it because of, you know, things in my ear and just whatever and I put it out. So he comes and says, you know what, it's going to be out and now this time it's going to be in a magazine front page. I mean, cover magazine of one of the biggest magazines in Africa. And I said, okay, cool, you know what, it's, it's okay, Lord, this story is yours, do with it what you want. And even as I was getting interviewed, I told the interviewer that it's not my story, you know, um, I'm going to give you all the details you need and God is going to write it. So I'd even told her like I would like to see like, uh, like I would just like to see the rough draft just so if it's any, if there's anything in it that I'm not happy with then it can be taken out or I can add something that I want or I can clarify on something. And then a few days later like God convicted me and he was like, are you the one that is going to correct me? Like am I the one that is going to correct God? If he said he's going to write this story and what is going to be in that magazine is what he wants to be in that magazine, am I the one that is going to come and start doing checking to see if everything is actually in there you know and that convicted me and I when this lady later asked me do I still want um to see the rough draft I said no God has control of it it's not my story anymore you know so I still haven't read what is there I know it's supposed to be coming out today is the 2nd of April so I know I don't know it's probably out or it's almost out I don't know but uh yeah that is Pretty much what I've been dealing with, I'm still strongly in God and I have had amazing, amazing experiences and guys when I tell you God speaks, God speaks, he does speak and this journey, as hard as it was in the beginning, as hard as it's going to be even in the future because you know there's always going to be challenges and there's always going to be things you don't expect to happen, happening and the thing is I have no guilt <laughs> you know like as long as you know that God is behind things not your plans but everything you're doing is God's plan right so you if you know that it's God's plan like you literally don't have to worry you know it's like sheep and a shepherd you know it's the shepherd that looks for the grass it's the shepherd that worries when there's a lion or whatever and he has to you know protect the sheep we're the sheep and God is the shepherd and that means like nothing is for you to worry about in your life if you live according to god's plan and you listen to god you ask god anything even if it can be the smallest thing lord shall i shall i leave the house now and if he says no don't leave the house now don't if he says live in an hour live in an hour he's keeping you from something it can be something as small as that it can be something as big as should I get into this relationship? Should I accept this job offer? Should I chase this? Should I chase that? And the minute you leave it all for God and He's directing your steps, you can never, ever fail. Like, there's no way to fail, you know? But now the problem is we do things our own way and then ask God to bless them. And God is just looking at us like, if only you knew the plans I had for you. You know, like you think, oh my goodness, you have such big dreams and such big goals and you say, my goal is this, my goal is that, my goal. But that is, it. all your goals are incomparable to what God has planned for you. And what God has planned for you will never bring you grief, misery, heartbreak, you know, bankruptcy, being miserable in your job hating your spouse like you will never have to face any of that because god is leading and guiding your steps the only thing you have to do is obey and you can't obey if you don't listen you have to listen every waking moment of the day you have to listen forget about religion forget about 
church and what your pastor is telling you every Sunday like they're just preaching these days and I'm sorry to say this but I feel like churches these days are just preaching a sermon preaching a word and that is it and every and us people are just going to church every Sunday hearing what he has to say and leaving church without really having gotten anything you enjoy the sermon but do you remember the sermon on Tuesday like are you leaving according to the preachings you're hearing in church like are you learning something like are you growing so it needs to be about your relationship personally with God and you'll hear many times people are going to oh let me ask my pastor for this let me ask my pastor to pray about this why God tore the curtain so you can go to God yourself it doesn't have to be through anybody yes you can get cancelled and all of that stuff i'm not saying that stuff is wrong yes you can ask people to pray for you because you know prayer is all going to god and all of that stuff but you need to be able to go to god by yourself speak to him as your father because he's listening to you and god doesn't need to speak to you through somebody else yes he can and he does many times but you should be able to hear god speaking to you when he is speaking to you I have a lot a lot of stuff to tell you guys and this is going to be a journey that I hope many of you will start thank you guys for watching and um, I feel like I'll probably remove another video early next week or you know it might be every Thursday I'm still trying to figure it out whatever God asks me tells me to do is what I'm gonna do like I just said and yeah and I'm sorry this is not like a happy go lucky video but then my heart was actually my head has been heavy for a lot of reasons which we'll get into in coming videos but uh yeah i'll see you guys in the next video bye